Hello everyone, in this video I am going to tell you about polycystic ovarian syndrome. So basically, uh, what is polycystic ovarian syndrome? It is a multi-system endocrinopathies in women of reproductive age specifically with various metabolic disturbances that are specially related to the hypersecretion of androgens which is hyperandrogenism, various menstrual disturbances and obesity also. So uh, it usually occur uh, in women uh, of the reproductive age so uh, it, why it is named as polycystic because there are multiple cysts usually more than 12 small cysts will be formed inside the ovary of that female so it can be related to various uh, hyperandrogen secretion various men menstrual disturbances example amenorrhea oligomenorrhea and obesity related factors also so it is also known as steen leventhal syndrome so it is the doc uh, he is the doctor who discovered this so that's why it is named after steen leventhal syndrome and another name that we usually see in our uh, examination questions and various mcq question that is pcod so it's another name is polycystic ovarian disease so now i'll tell you what are the main etiology or you can say the main factors that can lead to the formation of pcod so the main component is the genetic component here so it usually runs in family for example if a mother is having then the chances of the girl having is quite high so uh, it is autosomal dominant and in this there is a certain gene mutation that that is CYP21 gene mutation can be seen. Also it is seen in ob obese girls uh, who are having BMI more than 30. In those girls the adipose tissue will be very much high. So that adipose tissue will lead to the formation of the leptin, adiponectin and cytokines. So these three will interfere with the insulin pathway ultimately. So whenever they will interfere with the insulin pathway, they can make the, uh, you can say system resistance to the insulin. So the insulin are produced in normal amount, but they are not properly utilized. So there will be insulin resistant and hyperinsulinemia in the body. So they will be accumulated inside the insulin will be accumulated inside our body only. Also in cases of uh, high androgen production that is hyperandrogenism uh, it can lead to polycystic ovarian syndrome and sometimes mild inflammation in the ovaries for example when puberty uh, occurs in any female after that there can be due to some reasons there can be oophoritis and it can be of mild nature for many years and then it can lead to polycystic ovarian syndrome also certain lifestyle changes for example sedentary lifestyle in case of uh, uh, which can lead to obesity so this can also be the etiology of PCOD. Also some diet factors and stress is also an aggravating factor for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So now I will tell you about the main pathogenesis. So in pathogenesis we usually see there is hyper uh, androgenism that is the androgens are production uh, producing in a very high amount. So that will particularly lead to the hirsutism that is abnormal hair growth in female and also it will alters the lipid profile of the body that can lead to the increase LDL and decrease HDL. So certainly it will definitely lead to uh, some heart diseases after some time. Now what is the main mechanism that is uh, occurring here that these androgens will go peripheral aromatization and they will increase the estrogens. The estrogens will be increased. So whenever these estrogen will be increased, these estrogen will be having a positive feedback on luteinizing hormone and they also have a negative feedback on the follicular stimulating hormone. So positive feedback will lead to the increase of the luteinizing hormone while negative feedback on FSH will lead to the decrease, decrement of the follicular stimulating hormone. So in normal uh, females, uh, the normal ratio of the LH ratio FSH will be 1 ratio 1 because in those FSH will be high and LH will be low. But in case of PCOD, it is a specifically characterized uh, pattern that LH will be twice more as compared to FSH so the ratio will be reversed the ratio will be reversed so LH ratio FSH will be more than 2 ratio 1 so what this luteinizing hormone is doing ultimately this will activate the theca cell in the ovaries so these theca cells will then again form more and more androgens and specifically testosterone so usually uh, in normal females these testosterone or these androgens are converted into estrogen by our granulosa cell 
so just see here that usually our granulosa cell convert this testosterone into the estrogen in normal conditions but uh, these granulosa cells are basically activated by the follicular stimulating cells so here follicular stimulating cells as we already know is decreased so these cells will not be activated properly so whenever these cells are not activated properly they were not able to convert this testosterone into estrogen so ultimately there is increase in this testosterone so that's that is the main reason that androgens are increased in case of pcod patients but in case of uh, uh, so in the main you can say clinical finding and diagnostic clinical finding also is uh, androgens will be increased in case of pcod patients but in certain obese person the adipose tissue will be secreting ar aromatase so this aromatase will be converting these these uh, increased testosterone into estrogen also so in obese person there will be androgen will be also increased and estrogens will be also increased so both are increased in case of obese persons so they can lead to endometrial hyperplasia and also there is another mechanism of the insulin resistance as i have already told you earlier in obese person adipose tissue usually uh, secrete adiponectin and certain other factors i have told you here leptin adiponectin and cytokines so they usually interferes with the uh, insulin uh, pathway that will lead to the insulin resistant but while in lean patients also this insulin resistant can occur but the main pathway or you can say main etiology can is still unknown so this is the main pathogenesis which is occurring in case of uh, polycystic ovarian uh, disease or PC uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, girls so now we will see the main symptoms like what are the symptoms that these girls will be having so there will be amenorrhea will be present oligomenorrhea will be present and uh, hirsutism will be present hirsutism is mainly due to hyperandrogenism that I have already told you in the previous page here that due to high androgen production there will be hirsutism so there will be abnormal hair growth and also due to uh, more and more testosterone is producing uh, the acne will be more because as we already know that a uh, testosterone uh, high amount in the body will lead to the formation of the acne and another metabolic syndromes can be there for example uh, increase in insul insulin can lead to the android obesity android obesity is basically the waist to hip ratio will be more than or equal to 0 0.85 so this is android ob obesity that the uh, stomach is uh, in form of an android so the stomach is in form of an android and the waist to hip ratio will be 0 0.85 so this can lead to this and also due to insulin resistance there can be hyper pigmented patches of skin hyperpigmented patches of skin around the neck axilla and below the breast these are known as acanthosis nigricans so this is a uh, characteristic feature for uh, just before diabetes mellitus so whenever if a girl is going to have diabetes mellitus this is the earliest symptom so this is the hyperpigmentation patches of the skin around neck axilla below breast named as acanthosis nigricans also in these girls there will be infertility will be there this is a common complaint infertility so i have written here a, a mnemonic that is hiren syndrome it is also known as hiren syndrome that is from ha hyperandrogenism from ir insulin resistance insulin resistance from an acanthosis nigricans so this from this you can remember it easily uh, hiren syndrome from h hyper a androgenism i insulin r resistance acanthosis a and nigricans so these are the main symptoms that you will see in case of a pcos or pcod girl so now what are the main diagnosis that we have to do so basically the main diagnosis criteria is a rotterdam criteria so rotterdam criteria is basically we have three main uh, you can say uh, we have to check these three things first of all ovulatory dysfunction so ovulatory dysfunction that can be amenorrhea absence of menstruation cycle and it can be oligomenorrhea 
while hyper androgenism that is the testosterone level is quite high that is around 70 to 150 nanogram per deciliter so that can lead to hirsutism and acne so this is the second criteria second is polycystic ovaries on ultrasonography so whenever we will see on ultrasonography uh, or transvaginal sonography we will see polycystic ovaries so in this on the first page i have these polycystic ovaries will be seen there are multiple cysts and these cysts are usually 12 or more or 2 to 9 mm will be their normal size so from these three criteria there has to be um, all uh, there will be there has to be two must be present out of these three so if two are present for example if a girl has ovulatory dysfunction and hyperandrogenism these both uh, she is presenting with these symptoms then definitely uh, we can uh, say that she might have PCOD and also if these two are present so out of these three uh, we have to just uh, uh, you can say uh, check two criteria if two are present then we can say it is a diagnostic criteria for PCOD it is known as Rotterdam criteria also there are certain hormones which are increased or decreased in case of PCOD so what are these hormones so basically the those which are increased can are androgens definitely because this is one of the main criteria hyperandrogenism so testosterone levels will be high luteinizing hormone is also high estrogen insulin ldl cholesterol so all these hormones will be high in case of pcod patients there are certain hormones which are also decreased as we have already discussed in the pathogenesis fsh is decreased progesterone will also be decreased also there is a sex hormone binding globulin so this hormone will also be decreased in case of diagnostic criteria if we will check in these ladies so this is the main diagnosis that we can do in case of pcod patient now i'll tell you about the main treatment so what are the main goals of the treatment so the main goals of the treatment will be we have to decrease insulin resistance level in the uh, body second there will be uh, we have to restore the fertility of the female third we have to treat the hirsutism and fourth uh, there will be regular menstruation we have to give drugs uh, to so that uh, she can uh, have regular menstruation cycles so this is the main goal of treatment so if uh, she presents with irregular periods then we can give uh, oral contraceptive pills in case of obesity we can uh, su uh, suggest or tell her about lifestyle modifications in case of insulin resistance we can give met metformin that is quite a good drug and in case of hirsutism or acne we can give ocps with uh, ciproterone acetate ciproterone acetate so ocp is combined with ciproterone acetate must be given in case of hirsutism or acne patients so now managing infertility due to PC pcod so this is the main thing that we have to do in the treatment section that we have to manage the infertility so infertility is the main you can say uh, symptom for these girls so we have to manage infertility that is the most important and main cause is anovulation anovulation because ovulation is not occurring in these females so there are three lines of drugs that we can use first line drugs will be SERM that is selective estrogen receptor modulators selective estrogen receptor modulators so these will be clomiphene citrate so this is the drug of choice drug of choice to treat infertility in PCOD so this is this will be the the clomiphene citrate will be the drug of choice in case of uh, managing infertility due to PCOD uh, tomoxifen which can uh, it can also be used in those females who cannot tolerate clomiphene so those females who cannot tolerate this drug in those we can use tamoxifen now second line drugs will be gonadotropins we can use and LHFSH injections we can use so as to uh, maintain the androgen levels and also the FSH levels in the body and third line drugs we can also give GnRH agonist like luprolide and nephrelin so these can also be given as a third line drug therapy 
to treat mainly infertility due to PCOD. Now there are certain uh, insulin sensitizers. Insulin sen sensitizers can also be given. For example, uh, metformin. So metformin is the most common drug and it is also safe in pregnancy. It is usually given when clomiphene citrate is not showing any effect. So this drug is used when uh, clomiphene citrate is not showing any effect and it also helps in reducing the weight of the female. So this is quite a good drug. But the main drug treatment here is for infertility in case of PCOD will be clomiphene citrate. It is the drug of choice. Next will be surgical treatment. So when in some cases the girl do not respond to the medical therapy, then in those cases we have to do surgery. So surgery can be laparoscopic ovarian drilling, LOD that is the short name and laparoscopic electrocoagulation of ovarian surface that is LEOS. So these are the two surgeries mainly that we have to do. So what we usually do in these surgery, the monopolar current or laser is passed within the ovary to destroy the ovarian theca. So the ovarian theca is destroyed uh, and this is mainly done when uh, very high doses of gonadotropin are required for ovulation. So these are the main you can say surgical treatment that we usually perform in those females who do not respond to medical therapy. So this is everything that you need to know about polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease. Thank you.